In this video, I'm continuing on my solar off-grid project. I already made a video about this charge controller. This is a Victron. Uh, but today, we're going to mount this charge controller on the side and wire it up. So let's take a close look at how we're going to wire it. On the front of the unit are screws to tighten up these terminals which are located on the bottom of the charge controller. Now those types of terminals are fine if you're going to run in something like this. This is THHN wire and you can see it's made up of just a few uh, strands of copper. And then it's also okay if you're using something like this. This is solid core. But I'm going to be using a more flexible version uh, this wire here, which is more closely associated with welding cable, uh, this particular one was a set of jumpers. And you can see there's like 2,000 little strands in there or something like that. I don't know the exact number. Uh, but it is uh, pretty big and fat. So if you try to put that into these types of terminals, uh, it just deforms and doesn't make a good connection, so I've read. To make a, a better connection in these types of terminals with this kind of very thin strand copper wire, I picked up a bag of these. Now these are, I think they're called ferrules, and it's a, a tin plated copper or whatever type of plating is on that, but it's a, it's a copper uh, tube with a flare at one end to allow you to put this on the wire, crimp it, and then put this in. And notice, I got 35 millimeter ferrules and they just barely, there you go, slide in. So they just barely fit in these uh, terminal openings. This is a hydraulic crimper. Probably uh, nothing new to any of you guys who've been on YouTube and seen other people make battery cables. Uh, this was not the absolute cheapest version. There's a cheaper version out there, but this one had more dies available. So I think this one goes all the way up to an equivalent four gauge die. So that's why I picked up this version. But we'll hopefully be able to crimp our 35 millimeter cables. I wonder if these numbers associate with that. This die here says 35. And this one says 35. So we'll probably start with that one for this connection. Nope. That actually won't work. Both of those say 35, but there's too much space in there. So I'll go smaller than that. I'm not sure what these numbers correspond to then. I'm on the side of the battery cabinet box and I added two screws and they're gonna go on for this and just slip right there. And now I'll add two more screws on the bottom uh, to firmly fasten it in place. This die is marked with 18, so let's see what it does. There we have a double crimp. Let's see what that looks like. That looks really good. I like it. Okay, I've got the wire over here where it'll attach. And uh, let's go ahead and attach it to the uh, bus bar. This is the negative bus bar. So we're gonna I wonder if I can get a bigger bolt, a bigger washer. I threw a larger washer on here. Battery negative. Just loosen that up. Okay. 
There we are, all the way up. We have the negative two gauge wire going to the negative bus bar. Next is gonna be positive from here to the breaker. And the breaker is off. I'm just gonna use this chunk of wire as my kind of measuring tool. It's gonna go up like that. It's gonna feed in. Okay, so I'm taking this big chunk of wire that I have. Great. Okay, we got that cut through. I think this is more than two gauge. Right there. And then I have these uh, 10 millimeter nuts with a washer that's kind of, um, I don't know, serrated. Let's go ahead and get that on. Let's go ahead and turn the breaker on, and these will probably light up when we turn the breaker on. They did. So now at the top of the breaker, 48.8, and over here, 48.8. So this guy is now on. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Verify that we no longer have voltage. This is at the bottom and at the top. It's funny that it's showing up something, but I don't know why. It's probably this thing. This is a, a connection you can do to remote trip this. If you have like a switch on the outside of the building or something for firefighters. Um, and maybe that has some kind of resistor or something in there. I don't know. But great. So now we are all set. All the connections are tight. This one I was able to reuse one of the original uh, ring terminals. Cool! And this is not touching on the edge of this aluminum, which is interesting that you're allowed to have that inside the box. It just seems like a sharp edge, but you know, and after spending that time to get rid of the sharp edges there. Oh, you know, so one more thing I want to hook up this uh, ground post uh, over to this post. Uh, now, I know that outside I need six gauge wire where it's exposed to elements, but can anybody tell me what gauge wire is necessary uh, for this? I have plenty of 10 gauge. Can I use a 10 gauge THHN to connect here to here? Let me know in the comments below and thanks a lot for watching.